Hello, it's Tuesday today. I didn't film yesterday because I kind of got ahead of myself over the weekend by splitting one day into two uploads. So I'm getting back on track. It's Tuesday and it's half term here in the UK at the moment. Now, yesterday I did something which is very uncharacteristic for me. In fact, I was at it all day and even into the evening. I was not in the mood to do it. I didn't want to start, but I did. And I'm so glad I did it. And guess what it is? I had a really good tidy up, a really good tidy up. I haven't finished, but I've done a lot. Look, this area here, completely clear of clutter. This has been so cluttered for so long. This area, all unpacked and put somewhere now, finally. They had been there since I moved house in July last year. I have completely cleared off the table here. Let me show you the cellar. The cellar had got out of control. It's become the dumping ground. Now, ta-da! Much better. Oh, I almost want to come down and practice now just because it's tidy. And even this desk had ended up getting covered in papers and it's now clear. <sighs> I had no idea how happy this would make me, but it really has. I just thought I was doing a chore, but I'm so pleased and I'm spurred on to do more. So the next thing to deal with, dun, dun, Da, still full of things packed from the move in there. Those suitcases are not empty. Oh no, they have got things like ornaments and books and bits and bobs, things that you just, oh, things you don't want to get rid of, but like, you know, a snorkel. <laughs> you don't want to get rid of a perfectly good snorkel because you might use it a couple of times a year. Oh, so frustrating. Anyway, that's on for today. So I've managed to break all this up into little bits, you see, little chunks. It can be so hard to start big projects like that, like tidy the whole house or unpack all the boxes that are left from the move. It's a big, big daunting task, isn't it? So what I basically did was I sat down and I wrote in my diary little tasks in a list and I ticked them off as I went along. So here it is. Look, as you can see, it's all broken down into the individual tasks. And that has really helped me not to be overwhelmed by it. I know it's a bit daft and putting things like eat lunch and wash up, things that you do anyway every day, but ticking it off makes me feel like I've accomplished something, which makes me feel happy, which makes me feel motivated to go on to the next step. So I included it anyway. And as fired up as I am to start straight away under the stairs, I really need to deal with the washing up first. I think just starting off with all the, you know, the regular stuff done is a good starting point. I think that puts you in a good frame of mind already to go on to the next bit. This was very good timing. We actually had a charity bag collection today. I don't know if it's actually been collected. That's the first time since lockdown began that they've asked for donated items, so put a load of clothes in there. I've got a sneaky feeling they might not collect it, but let's see how it goes. Because we've had these here before and they haven't gone, but I've got it on my doorstep. I'm just going to check, see if it's there. Hang on. It's still there. It's 10 past 11. Ooh, you know what that means, don't you? Coffee o'clock. Yes. I'll, um, I'll sip it while I'm washing up. Being busy doesn't need to stop me drinking coffee. I think we're at a bit of a funny point with the lockdown at the moment. You know when the crisis hits? You kind of get a bit of adrenaline, sort of. It's like it's everything's different and it's kind of stimulating and I think everyone can in that sort of stimulated adrenaline ish sort of state be a lot more enthusiastic about things like the lockdown <laughs> but I think it's wearing off I think that crisis state can only last for so long and then the adrenaline drops and people are just left with their normal feelings and I think that's happening now I perceive that people are like getting bored with the lockdown they want to get back to their normal lives they want to get back to their routine I perceive <laughs> we're gonna have a bit of a resurgence you know I don't know how long people want to stay in a state of crisis for anyway let's see what happens weather has been beautiful lately. It's been so nice to be able to open the windows first thing in the morning and have fresh air come into the house. You see, you people that live in nice warm places, you have no idea what it's like to be having to keep your windows shut all the time just because it's so flipping cold out, but it's not at the moment. Oh, it's so lovely. It is literally like a breath of fresh air because that's what it is. Mm. It's making me very happy anyway. Mm. That fresh air. 
with a hint of fag smoke and other people's washing. I'm procrastinating, I'm supposed to be washing up. Beans haven't come up yet, but we wouldn't expect them to, so they've only been in a couple of days. There are slug trails, as you see, so they are clearly at large. David has survived being dropped on his head. And the petunias are definitely diminishing in size. That one's doing all right. This is still alive in spite of having his bent stem sellotape, so he's survived. This poor thing has been slugged, as you can see. And they're all right. For some reason, the slugs like that one, and I don't know why. I presume I can't put salt on the soil. I'm assuming that would poison the soil. I've ordered some things, though. A new broom to sweep all this muck up, so I don't have a yard broom yet. What else? I've ordered three big pots for the courgettes because they're going to bush up and become enormous. I'm excited for the courgettes. I've also ordered a big bag of compost so I'm waiting for that to come and then I'll do my herbs. They can be planted any time anyway. That's that done. I've decided the number one task when I approach the cupboard of doom is just simply to bring every item out and just arrange it here in the front room so I can see what I've got and then I shall decide what my next steps will be from there, one step at a time. That coffee is delicious by the way. I'm thoroughly enjoying swigging my way through it as I work. This is the sorry state of our fridge at the moment. Yes, unhealthy Coke. I know I shouldn't have it. But anyway, this is Izzy's meaty bits pile. She just has some meaty bits to snack on because she's not a veggie. Cheese. Uh, yeah, not an awful lot of healthy stuff left, is there? And there's the total sum of our fresh, in inverted commas, vegetables. Fresh being a relative term. It's not very inspiring, is it? I do have potatoes though. I am going to make a vegetable stew with potatoes and frozen and tinned veg because I have loads of that left. And do you know what? I know it sounds a bit mad, but I'm not going shopping yet for fresh fruit and veg because I'm just trying to hold off for as long as possible because last week I went to two shops on two days and I felt really wretched afterwards because if I'd picked up the coronavirus in the first one, I might have been shedding viral load on the next day in the next shop, so I was cross with myself about that. But I was disappointed by the first shop. I thought they had a lot more foodstuffs than they did, but they only literally had sweeties and crisps, and it just, I can't live on that. So, although it was quite fun to buy some and get some snacks in, that's not really, uh, we had to go to the other shop the next day. So I was trying to give it at least sort of five to seven days to see if I get any symptoms before going in another shop. So we do have frozen, and we do have tinned, and yes, we are missing things like nice tasty yogurts and just nice treaty things, but we can live without those, it's fine, and Isabel's accepted that as well. Let's see what I can magic up out of the freezer and cupboard. Here's the concoction so far. We've got the rest of that monkey celery hidden in there amongst potatoes. There's some cumin seeds, some ground coriander, a bit of turmeric. And here we have some frozen veg to go in. We've got some frozen sliced mushrooms, frozen mixed peppers, frozen sweet corn and frozen peas. I'm also going to add a tin of butter beans. Here's my stew. I've just added some hot water to it. I've seasoned it with some of this Italian seasoning. And you know, when you're in a desperate situation, <laughs> Oxo cube to uh, hide the fact that it's all frozen. It's nearly one o'clock now. The stew is simmering away nicely on the stove and smelling delicious. And I've just had a really nice long natter to my mum on the phone. And there was a loud knock on the door and this appeared from the delivery man. It's obviously something I've ordered, but I can't remember what it is. So let's find out. so long ago it's taken ages to come but I think I know why it's taken so long look it's a Chinese one. Oh, I'm so excited for this I hope it's good quality I'm gonna look inside I have always wanted a world map puzzle because I really want to know where things are in the world and I look them up and then I forget again it's really frustrating that's good storage hang on <laughs> This was a lot cheaper than the ones I originally looked at, so 
maybe it won't be super quality. Oh, let's see. It's wooden. It's done already. <laughs> it's apparently it's got letters to show which like what do you call it? A quadrant? Is it a quadrant when it's more than four? There's eight sections and they're marked with what's that? Oh, I see. These are like dividers for the inside of the box. So when you put it back away, I suppose you put your different sections in different sections in the box. It's like compartmentalised. Well, it's not the best. Look, it's a bit blurry, isn't it? But I guess I could possibly have the atlas out on the table for reference. Here is our lunch and the portions are a bit big, but there was just a tiny dribble left in the pan and I didn't want to leave it in there. Well, Izzy's down taking an absolute age to finish her lunch, eating it one pea at a time. Owie. How's lunch? Okay, but I just accidentally bashed my earlobe. Oh dear. With the spike of the stud into my skull. Oh no, you might have pierced your brain. No, I didn't. Oh, that's good. You can't pierce what you don't have. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Clearly related to the scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz. Oh really? Only had a broom. Oh my goodness, the stuff. Oh. One thing at a time, Imo. One thing at a time. Just think about getting everything out one by one. Okay, it's all out. Quite a few suitcases packed with things. And there's a rucksack over there. Some boxes. Now, the boxes were for Music Magpie, but they just didn't collect twice. <laughs> so they're still boxed. And I thought, well, I'll just log them on some other selling website. And I haven't done it yet because I've just been so busy just homeschooling and doing music and doing the vlog. So it just hasn't happened. But maybe it will now we're in lockdown. This suitcase is actually empty, so that doesn't need a packing. Now I could get rid of that suitcase but of course in the pandemic that's a bit awkward because nobody's accepting donations but I could put it in the loft once it's empty maybe. <sighs> it's been interesting to see what's in there. It says books and winter snow clothes on there. I found a load of tea lights and matches. I might put them in the outside little tiny sheddy thingy to have in the garden maybe of an evening. If we ever sit out there at any point once it starts to look nice we might do. I don't have them in the house I just think they're too much of a fire hazard. So. I'm not. I've got way too many carry bags so I need to get rid of some of those or at least store them outside until I can donate them. Outside in the sheddy thingy, I mean. Well, I'm going to put the hoover around here now. I'm so glad of my little battery operated hoover here. It's really coming into its own. <laughs> got the cleanest of carpets, it's hit, but never mind. It's only the understairs cupboard. This is a very big shadow of mine. Looks like some flooring stuff, some laminate floor leftovers there, and some underlay. I'm going to keep that because it might be handy. Oh, there was also a duvet under there as well, which was a bit dusty, so I've just put it straight in the washing machine. It's quite a big washing machine, so hopefully it won't kill the washing machine or the duvet. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is unpack the purple case, which is this one. I think it's nearly all books. There we are. It's not even full, actually. It's halfway a ton, though. I've made some room downstairs now. Ooh, I've been looking for that book. Excellent. Music book. Welsh folk songs. Good. This was given to me by Greg in my band. I think he wants me to learn some of them. Oh, the I Spy books. Have you ever seen these? They're great. Sidetrack alert! <laughs> They're little tick-off books, they are. So you go out into nature or whatever and you find the things and you get points for different things that you find. Oh, good. How do you know what? This is quite good because I was actually wondering where they were. I have been looking for them and failed to find them. Trees, tree spotting. So this is a good sort of unschoolerish activity for learning how to identify trees, for instance. I bought loads of these. I bought more than I could use, but perhaps we can use them now. Birds. We didn't even start these ones. There's so many I Spy books. I'll link a few in the description if you like, and you can have a little look. Because you've got things like I Spy on a car journey, I Spy at the airport, I Spy in France. You know, there's absolutely loads. Here's I Spy at the seaside. So these aren't just about scoring points and ticking things off. They do actually tell you a bit about the thing that you've been looking for, you see. Full of information. It's very educational. 
yeah, we didn't get very far with learning French. <laughs> Sometimes I have bought something twice without realising, oh look, that was a pound and that was two pound. Oh, I've been looking for these. I have the whole set. I bought them on eBay when Izzy was little. And as we've been doing human biology now, if she hasn't understood something, and I was looking for the kidneys because she struggled with the inner workings of the kidneys because it's quite complex. I was looking for these books and I couldn't find them. Now I know why. We've done the ear as well. That's in GCSE, Human Biology. Good. This is a good book. I recommended this to somebody the other day who lives in Germany and is watching from Germany. But uh, I mentioned they do a German version, so she's bought the German version. So I'm waiting to see how she gets on with that. This is very good for learning to sort of get yourself up on your feet very quickly with a new language, the Unlocking series. They use English vocabulary to build on, basically. Well, I'll put a link in the description and you can see what I mean, but it's a fast tracking way to just get you up and running very quickly if you just feel like you just need a bit of a kick off the side, like in a swimming pool, you know, <laughs> but with the language. They don't help you with the pronunciation very much other than writing it in phonetics. You need to hear it as well, obviously. Yes. Oh, more French. Never did really get very far with French. Oh, look, bilingual read it yourself book. Spanish and English. Brain. The heart. Excellent. I think some terminology might have changed for some of the inner chambers of the heart since that book was made. Oh, I'm so looking forward to having a good old rummage through these again. Woohoo! Right, I've sorted those out by language. French, Portuguese, Spanish, and I'm going to go and put them upstairs. Oh, that's Italian. I just got a phrase book. That's all from a charity shop saying, can't speak any Italian. I love the sound of Italian. I love the sound of Italian. It's just beautiful. I'd love to be able to make that noise and it means something. So, yeah, one day, first of all, I want to master Portuguese and then Welsh, and then I want to brush up my French and get good at that as well. Might do some Spanish, but Italian's definitely on the list, but I'm very tempted with Mandarin just because it's so interesting. Like, it's the sounds, for me, it's how it sounds. Like, Mandarin's completely different because of all the intonation actually having meaning, and I, yeah, I've never spoken a language where the intonation has actual literal meaning. Obviously in English it does, because there's a lot of difference between no, no, and no. I mean, they all mean different versions of no, don't they? And you can tell by the tone, but it's not an actual literal meaning. It's like unspoken. Oh, I will get back into languages one day. I will, because whenever I think about it, I get excited. I've worked up a bit of a thirst, I have. I've been in the loft taking the big suitcases up. I put plastic bags over them and then put them up just in the loft cavity. They were light enough to get up, just a bit awkward. It's hot up there because it's a hot day out and the roof always gets hot when it's a hot day and it gets very cold when it's a cold day because presumably it's not very well insulated. Front room is looking like this at the moment. And that is looking like that at the moment. So I've got rid of some of the stuff. Now those boxes of books, I'm gonna keep them for now because I do eventually want to sell them somehow online, but I don't wanna be traipsing back and forth to the post office in the pandemic. But at some point I will sell them. I'll meticulously list them and sort that out eventually. So I'm just gonna put them back for now, but I'll put them back tidier so I can actually get in and out. I'm nearly there with it. Everything's back except the carrier bag. So I'm gonna go through these and rationalize them. I'm gonna save the big Ikea ones, but I'm gonna put them in the little sheddy thing out the back because they are really useful. Like if someone's just moving house, I can lend them to them or if we need to transport a lot of things from one place to another they're just so handy I'm gonna put the tea lights in the shed and I found some shelf bracket thingies which I'm just gonna put in the shed for now as well anyway isn't that better it's like a walk-in storage area now rather than a big massive mountain I'm so pleased so the ornaments because I don't have my shelves up yet and I'm not in a rush to. My ornaments are in that owl suitcase at the end there but they're not just ornaments my ornaments are things like my grandfather's wind-up clock, which doesn't even work, but I'm attached to it because I remember it from when I was little. And they're really old things that belong to my late relations that they've had since I was a kid. 
so some little wooden vases and my grandmother's jewellery box. I've even got a collection of teeth. So I've got my grandmother's false teeth, which she never wore. They were a bit of a family joking point and she thought it was hilarious as well. She got them and just couldn't get on with them. So they just lived in her biscuit barrel on the sideboard and she'd take them out and pop them in to amuse us children every so often. And uh, that was about it. But I ended up with them and I just kind of like them. They're a bit kind of unusual, unusual souvenir. And I also have all the casts from my teeth because they used to be really crooked when I was little and they were gradually straightened with years of orthodontistry so I've got the gradual progression of my own teeth in plaster which I want to keep. There it's completely done the bags are back really pleased with that that was a good afternoon's work that was and they collected the charity bag as well thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye